Hello, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming Film and Animation, and the first constraint we're going to look at is called a point constraint. So a point constraint is uh, this one right up here, and it basically deals with uh, having a point or a joint um, constrained to the point of another object. Now, it doesn't have to be one of these NURBS circles. I'll show you how you can bring these in and adjust them and parent them down. Um, but it, it can help just, and you'll see these quite a few times when you look at character rigs and everything like that. But this one here, for example, could be used for squash and stretch. So I've constrained this top part of uh, this bone uh, to this circle, and I've taken the rest of the bone to this circle. Now it's important to understand that this has been uh, weight painted, um, which we looked at in the previous uh, one there, so you can see how much of it it actually influences. You can see how you can change that to get a better, stronger influence if you so wish. Um, but really what I'm trying to show off here is how you can use a point constraint um, to get that squash and stretch. Um, so you would still move this, um, but as it goes through the constraints you can see it deforming. So the key to that would then of course be moving all of it, the constraints and the bone, um, and then getting that in there. So, uh, as a quick demonstration of how this works, uh, if we go here, we can take an object, and this doesn't have to be with bones, but obviously that's what we're using. Um, but just to give you an idea of what this constraint does, uh, if we have a spotlight, on the center there. I don't know where that other light is coming from. I think it's a different one and everything. Basically, when we're talking about a, a constraint or a point constraint, we first select the object that we want to constrain. So the parent, if you will, and then we select the child. And this is different from when we're parenting things. When we parent things, we select the child first and then the parent, and then we move it. When we're doing constraints, we work in the other direction. So I'm going to have this light follow this cube. So I will get this uh, point constraint here. So I'll select my cube, because that's gonna be what this uh, light is constrained to, and then I'll move it here onto that. And so now, as you can see, there's this blue sort of highlight here. There is now a constraint in here called point constraint. And what that means is that as I move this, that light follows. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't really follow the rotation of it um, or the size, just the movement. Um, so that's, in a essence, what that's doing. Now, as I said before, it doesn't just have to do um, with that, it can also be components, in this case, this part here. So all I do there is I select that, I select the point there, and then I constrain it, and it works on that as well. So that's really the, all there is to a point constraint, and most of its uses. Um, there obviously are other uses, um, but experiment around with it and get a feel for it and how it works, and the difference between parenting and constraints, because that will be useful. Um, but in the next thing, we will look at a rotation constraint. So how can we make it so that it actually constrains? And this, you'll see the spotlight here, uh, moving and following uh, cubes and things like that. So I look forward to seeing you in that next video.